Hey folks. Evening. Evening. I've got my stuff together. I've got the important supplies ready, so I think I'm almost good to go. Almost. Uh, right. So I've been a busy beaver yesterday, and um, I have gone ahead and already removed capacitors from that, 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 and one less one, and that. We've got a pile of um, we've got a pile of these to get through. Now, I've, as I say, I've already uh, I've already decapped them. You know, they've all yeah, they're all in varying degrees of rot as well. Um, I've still got a little bit of um, rot to remove from some of these. Lager? No, 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 no. I I, I don't drink lager. I drink, um, I drink quality. You see, that, that is not lager. <laughs> anyway, so we got this one, we got this one, and I still have that, that, and that to pile through, so we've still got a fair few. Still got a fair few. It's not the removing the caps, Wayne, that's the problem for me. It's cleaning them up afterwards because um, these game gears, in particular, they uh, they corrode like crazy. It's, it's unbelievable how fast they corrode, you know. Well, maybe not how fast they corrode, but how much they corrode, should I say? You know, you end up with cold solder joints, damaged solder, all around wherever the caps have leaked, and I'll bet you any money, I've not looked at this one yet, but I'll bet you any money this is just as bad. So we'll have a look at this in a second. I think this is from the, um, I think this is from the random American game gear I had. But yeah, yeah, evening all anyway, good to have you all along, and uh, yeah, you know, I've been saying I'd get around to doing a stream, and uh, Finally, finally the stream gods have allowed it. Or really, you know, I've just stopped being lazy. But whatever. <laughs> right. So, these caps are always a bugger. Let's, uh, let's get a bit of zoom on, shall we? And let's move that a bit. Oh, Wayne, I've had... Speckled hen tastes like crap. <sighs> Wayne, Wayne, you and I can't be friends anymore. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Taste is subjective, right? You know, I'm, a, I'm an ale drinker, primarily. I like ale, um... I like mead. Mead's amazing. But mead is a kind of uh, it's a kind of thing that's gonna it's gonna take you out of the game for uh, a couple of days once you've been on it. <laughs> right. Anyway, I see uh, RB's worked out that command. So, like, what's the zoom level like? Okay, so we can see everything alright. So, what I want to do is blow the hot air away from any plastic. So, let's get this, uh, let's get this party started. Oh man, that's 
That is not giving. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, we got the fish smell again. Lovely, lovely jubbly. How's the audio, by the way, guys? Don't forget to dislike it. <laughs> yeah, this is always fun. Oh, that was a nice pop. Whoa. Okay. Right. So the only problem I ever have with these is like this plastic sockets. They're always just a little too close to where the caps are. And, you know, if you get hot air on these, they just... Nope. So I'm going to brutalise with clippers. Not really the recommended way to do this, but... Oh, that one's already really loose. Let's, let's hold it down a bit. As long as you're careful with this, you won't damage it. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, glad the audio's good. So, yeah. I clip the cans on these soundboards. I do it on the uh, actual Game Gear motherboards as well a little. Now I just sort of do what I'm doing now. Ugh. Tell you, they're an absolute bugger to clean up these. Sometimes it's better to take all the surface mount parts off in this middle area because yeah fun and games fun and games. Right I'm probably going to do the clean up under the scope Get some light on. Yeah, okay, there's collateral damage on here for sure. So if you take a look at what I'm looking at now, um, you'll see here there's a bunch of like balls of solder and what happens is where all that corrosion you can see around the capacitor legs is, it kind of prevents the solder from properly melting and what can melt ends up balling up and sort of rolling off into those solder balls. It's a right git. Makes cleanup really annoying. But yeah, you can see there's quite a lot of collateral. Like all of that solder needs replacing on here for this to be any good. Which is a shame. Most through-hole plastic connectors will slide off the pins if room underneath for a pry tool. Yeah, maybe, but um, I don't really want to mess about with that. There's room for damage, and to be honest, I can manoeuvre around anyway. So yeah, alright, getting these off is not going to be fun. Never is. So what I like to do is come in with the flux and uh, basically flux the heck out of everything because they just, yeah, all the solder's got to go, all of it, it's just wrecked. Game gears are actually, um, they're quite a lot of cleanup work, they're not really worth the time that you put into them to be honest, I wouldn't recommend them. I used to, and they're not bad for practice, but, yeah, well, you know, there's not really money in them. Good for learning, though. Particularly good for practicing cleaning up bad corrosion, I'll give them that. But yeah, you can see, this is just, this is terrible. I'm going to get some solder wick on this and then quickly check the chat. What's going on? Nothing new? Okay. 
me, yeah, you can uh, you can only get off so much doing it like this as well, because a lot of this isn't no longer solar, it's just corrosion, really. It helps a little bit, but you got to scrape it off, really. Yeah, that's just, that's just gross. Yeah, yeah. Right. Always fun doing these. I tell you, these audio boards, they take far longer than they should. They really do. Like, look at that. I mean, it's got some of it off, but look at the state of it. Right. Okay, anyway, we got to scrape that a good bit, so... Where's my knife? Where is my scalpel? Let's, let's get in here with a scalpel. See what we can get off? It's funny as well, it makes this sort of... You can kind of feel it, right? Feels, it feels as bad as it looks. You know, the trick is to get as much of the surface rot off as we can. Uh, let's try a fiberglass pen. Oh, that's not fiberglass. That's brass. Uh, I think this is fiberglass. Definitely fill over glass. Alrighty. Okay, let's clean it off again. You really can spend quite a long time cleaning these up. You really can. Well, I say you, I mean me, but you know. <laughs> so we get into something that looks like solar now. So we might be able to get that off. Try again now. Yeah, it's just so heavily contaminated, it just it doesn't want to behave like solder anymore. times. Yeah, cleaning these sucks. Cleaning these sucks. Drives a man to, uh, to want a beverage, you know. But, yeah, getting there, look. We are getting there. You know what, they don't build electronics like they did in the 80s. I'm pretty sure a modern PCB would fall apart with this level of corrosion on it. At least you can bring them back.
Come on. See, I don't want to spend too long doing this, but the cleanup is really necessary, especially on an audio board, or you'll just get... I mean, don't get me wrong, I know the Game Gear is only like one speaker, sort of old setup, but it makes a huge difference for the sound quality. Absolutely disgusting, look at it. And the worst thing is, I gotta do it for all of these components as well, you know? So annoying. Oh, I'll rinse it off again. Corrosion on the links. I did notice actually when I um, when I did that first links, there was corrosion on it, not major corrosion, and you couldn't really see it like you can under the scope with this. But I noticed when um, I put the hot air on it, I ended up with what I th I thought I had solder balls everywhere, but it wasn't. It was basically where the solder had heated up. It had done this sort of behaviour that you can see here, because if you look here. It like balls up like that. Uh, let's get that fiber glass off the tweezers while I'm at it. There we go. But yeah, that the way it sort of balls up like this, that's yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just because of the heavy um heavy corrosion. Right, anyway, let's get some solder on here and then suck that up and see if that helps. that off and hopefully that will um, that'll clean it up a bit. Let's have a look. And this is just for two pads, right? Like, yeah, this is why I kind of, I'm kind of going off these, these game gears. You know, I can get I can get them up pretty clean when I work on them like this, but it's just a lot of time for not a lot of game really. But yeah, it's amazing the amount of damage these old electrolytics do to these. But, you know what, I actually think this is starting to look decent. We're getting there. I mean, for what it's worth, in terms of time, it's probably better just to buy, like, one of the, um, modern replacement audio boards for, like, a tenner or something. I think that's roughly how much they go for. Yeah, that's already looking a lot better now. We're getting full coverage of that. Yeah. Alright. Those pads are good now. <laughs> we just need Phil and the whole gang's here. Oh, hello Jason. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the party. The uh, the extremely old machines that like to spill up their guts everywhere. Ah, that's, that's good enough. Okay. Right. Do 
Yeah, I will say actually, I prefer um, I prefer for terms of actual soldering and you know repair work in general. The newer consoles, in my opinion, are actually a little bit easier to work on because you generally don't have this kind of cleanup work to do. I mean, you sometimes do with water damage machines, right? But like, you're very rarely going to have electrolytics that have spilled up their guts and then rotted for 20 years, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, there we go. I think that's that's okay. Now I've got all the fun times of getting these surface mount components off. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can. I bet the solder doesn't really want to give either. But let's see. Mm. Bit too close to a ton of plastic. I want to get hot air on it, but I think that's probably unwise. Uh, we'll come in with some solder in the uh, iron then. Right, have I said hello to everyone? I don't think I have, so... Hello Chris. Hello Jason. Hello Wayne. Um, hello Jinxie. Hi Daddle Fix It. <laughs> that name, man. <laughs> This one right here that you can see on the bottom there it doesn't want to. Like that solder's just gone. It's so corroded it doesn't want to melt. And that side's okay. Oh, alrighty. Let's get that out of the way then. Just pop that off my tweezers if I can. Come on. It's sticking to everything except what I want it to. There we go. Right. So we got that out of the way so we can probably clean this up a bit now. Yeah, that's much better already. Ah, fiddly. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Alright, and let's get some fresh solder on there. Check the chat. Dan, do you have channel members? No, I don't because I don't have enough uh, subscribers or um, view thing or whatever. I forget. I forget what it is. But no. Um, wait. Am I thinking, or am I confusing it with something else? I don't have enough um, traffic to warrant, you know any like channel thing like modification oh god what's the word I'm I'm having a I can't I can't do words I haven't even had a beer today and I can't do words must be the hangover <laughs> I think you know what I'm trying to say alright uh, back to the thing in my well so, so yes
There we are. I think we're doing all right. Ah, uh, yes. The chat dominator. <laughs> Anyway, let's let's get on with this. So right. You can tell there's like a mixture of flux and corrosion on this board now. <laughs> God, I gotta clean I gotta clean this. There's just too much rubbish in the way now, I can't see anything. Yeah, it probably was the beer yesterday, Wayne. Yeah. Right, there we go. Let's have a look. Let's let's move the gunk out of the way and have a look at these. I mean, it's pretty important to get this rubbish off the board because, you know, if you leave corrosion on there, it's only, well, at this point, it's probably already done all the damage it's going to do, to be fair, but it's still wise to get rid of it. You know, it's, it's not good for it, is it? So. So, what's the beer yesterday? I had my first my birthday yesterday. Oh, the first beer this year, wow. Yeah, I quite like, um... Oh man, I miss it actually, but I, I, I quite like going to, um... There's a beer festival that happens yearly in Nottingham, and it's a huge, huge beer festival, and it's really good. You know, if you're into that kind of thing, you know, it's like all real ales and things like that, and it, it's normally a huge festival. Obviously, since you know the world went to um, went to hell and back, things have been a bit different. But yeah, fun event anyway. Get rid of some of the burnt fluxy. Yeah, this is definitely looking better. All right, let's get that little. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a resistor or a cap now. I can hardly see it with my eyes. I'll have to have a look in a minute. I think it was a resistor. Oh no, it was a cap. So we'll get this back in. It's kind of funny as well, like these um, these early 90s SMD components, they look massive compared to something like what you get on the Switch. <laughs> like an order of magnitude more massive. Right, let's clean up this nasty one as well. So what we got on it? We got a lot of scunge, a lot of grunge, a lot of scunge. Let's get that off. I 
Problem is, once you get heat on it, you kind of burn the corrosion, which makes it harder to get off. It's really annoying, actually. But, um, hey -o. Hey -o. Oh, yeah, I meant to ask. Jason, did you make any progress with that switch that you were talking about? The one with the, uh, was it the cart slot? Yeah, indeed, times were different back then, but hey -o. Oh, come on. Gotta love the smell of burning flux and corrosion in the evening. <laughs> Alright, that pad's actually come up alright. Looked worse than it is. That's good news at least. So yeah, what I'm doing is I'm not actually fully recapping these at the minute. I will be doing. But I'm going to do it kind of factory style, right? I'm going to line them all up and just start doing it. No, I've not tested all the screens yet. Not yet. Hi Brian, welcome to the stream. Welcome all. Actually, I'm not really smelling the smell of fish at the minute, fortunately for me. It's, um, yeah. It's not too bad today. Trying to get as much of this corrosion as I can. Because I know underneath all of this nasty uh, corrosion lives the beating heart. of the early 90s sounds that we all remember. The late 80s and early 90s. The beating heart of Sega. And I think in this case it was Sega of America for this particular board. It's funny actually, I was watching an episode of The X-Files a few weeks back. It's the episode that has, um, uh, no way, not yet, that fume extractor's not fully completed. I'll show you guys that in a minute actually, where, where I'm at with it. It's not fully completed because I've got to do the bottom portion. The top portion's printed, but I've got to print the bottom thing and assemble it all. And you know what, I think I'm happy with that now. We can move on from this, I've just properly sold it. Let's coil back. Yeah, much better now. Okay. Yeah, my DIY solar fume extractor trademark, all rights reserved, limited, open source. Lol. Um, yeah, coming along all right. Coming along all right. Right, let's see. 
so we got three more sets of pads to do on this I don't think we've got any more surface mount stuff that really needs doing no we're good on that front okay so let's just get the corrosion off from around these I'm thinking flux and uh, solar wick should be good enough for these they're not heavily corroded no maybe this one is oh yeah these these probably need sorting not sure how well you can see that yeah that all needs sorting So let's have a go. Let's just see if this solder mounts. It does, that's a good sign. Alright, reflowing these should be good enough then. Atari stand the sign agree. Is that for the almighty Atari Lynx? Yeah, it's for the Lynx 2 actually. Yeah, I designed that myself on Saturday. I've actually got it printing right this second. But it may or may not print out right. If it doesn't, I'll just have another go. <laughs> up that surface corrosion with a wick. <sighs> really is an unpleasant smell. Although it's not fishy today. It's just an unpleasant smell. Yeah, anyway, like, how, how is everyone doing on this fine bank holiday Monday? Or at least bank holiday for the UK, anyway. I know not everybody on here is from the UK, so... But how's everyone doing on this fine Monday? This is where you're all like, but Dan, it's not Monday. Sober up. And it's like, but I'm not drunk. Not yet. <laughs> Oh, we've got a bit of damage. Yeah, we've got a bit of corrosion on one of the legs of this, um, presumably, audio amp chip. Sure is crispy. All right, fine, whatever. Let's let's try and do something about these chip legs. I'm not sure how well it's showing up on the camera. Maybe you can see it. But that leftmost leg, there's quite a bit of um, presumably capacitor leakage all over it. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I know this might seem a bit weird. I'm going to coat these pins in solder and then just wick it off and hope that that helps clean it a bit better. Hmm. 
Right. Hopefully, wicking that off will get whatever bits of corrosion on there off as well. I think that's better. It's funny, every once in a while in the background I can hear my 3D printer going whirp, making weird noises at me. Oh hey, find it, fix it, fill up it. Let's see what's going on in the chat then. So, what's everyone saying? So, oh, good lord! <laughs> Quote forty turned up, gave you the old port, all nineteen pads attached to it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> 19... Uh, wow. I've actually got... Um, I've got an Xbox One Fat coming my way. I picked it up on eBay for 40 pounds just to practice on, you know. I've not really done an actual... Well, I've done plenty of retro games consoles, right? But anyway, I bought an Xbox One that needs an HDMI port done on it, supposedly. And supposedly that's all that's wrong with it. Now apparently it went to CEX for repair, so presumably whoever owned it bought it from CEX, tried to get it done on warranty and then didn't. I don't know. I don't really know what the truth of the story is. But long story short, I'm getting a busted Xbox to practice on. I've got a feeling it's probably going to be the Southbridge chip. Because um, Phil mentioned that to me and said keep an eye out on that. I'm kind of hoping it's just whichever tech worked on it did a crap job with the traces. <laughs> He's reading. Right, what we got going on? So. Oh, Micro Mage. Micro Mage. There is a command for you in the chat. I think I've told you this before, actually. I don't know. I've got the memory of a goldfish, but you know, if you type exclamation Micro Mage, the bot will do things. The bot will be like, oh, let's plug. Let's plug Micro Mage. That's it, corrosion. Be gone. There we go. I will say, getting off, getting off this leak cap mess is just really, a, really annoying. But there we go. I think, I think that might be it. In fact, I'm going to coat each set of pads with some. Get out of the way, desolder braid. Some fresh solder, and then wick that off.
hopefully that'll help us clean up any last remnants of that corrosion. We will eventually get this looking like a decent little uh, PCB and not like a rotted monster. I don't know why, I just kind of want to bridge this. Hey, I bridged it. Yeah. And then let's do this. Followed by this corner. Let's see, can we see that? We can see that, excellent. Now hopefully, wicking that off will get the last remnants of uh, corrosion off, but if not, we've probably got enough off now for this to be in a decent enough state. <laughs> yeah, I think you're thinking of Phil and Sarah there, not me. <laughs> I can do your beer. Maybe I could add a beer command. Yeah, there's an idea, folks. Oh man, these pads are looking a lot better now. Gotta go do pick up. Be back later. Good luck. Thanks, Micro. Take care. Ah, the RB King Command trademark. Don't make me yell at pigeons. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know what? I am gonna, I am gonna build at some point a little simple switch that I can have neck like next to me when I stream that allows me to censor myself with a bleep. I need to shorten that text. That text is a bit weird. Anyway, anyway, let's let's clean this up. Come on. There we go. <laughs> it's only took how many passes to get most of this corrosion stuff off, but you know, I'm happy with it now. Those pads actually look like pads again. Alright, uh, let's get this cleaned up. I'm going to drown it in uh, IPA.
absolutely flooding it. But, apart from the odd bit of burnt flux, this already looks better. I'm happy with this. Great. I might still chuck it in the ultrasonic just to get any last dregs of nastiness off it. You know what? Yep. This, uh, this almost looks acceptable. There's only one bit I'm not that happy with. Man, it's windy outside today. Ain't no pigeons around for me to yell at today. It's too windy for them all. Alright, that'll do. Okay, that's one of my audio boards sorted out. Uh, I'll just put that aside. Power board next. Don't need the microscope for this though. But what I do need is the desolder gun. Switch over to the camera. a bit small. Let's go with that one. While we're at it, we'll add some new solder to this as well. Help get it off. So we'll get fresh solder on all these.
like a soap. You know, that don't look right. That little, uh, that little transistor doesn't look like it's sitting right on the board. I think you can see that on the camera as well. Yeah, it doesn't look good. I might get a bit of hot air on that in a minute. Let's have a look at chat. Okie dokie. Right. Yeah, this desolder gun is not the best. Doesn't always work that well for me. But let's see. So I orbit the leg and then do that. Try again. kind of push it in orbit around a bit and then you let the surface tension of the solder sort of fill the nozzle end and then you pull the trigger and it should pull it all out as long as you've heated it up enough all the way through that didn't do so great Try getting a bit more, a bit more solder onto these joints. I don't think you can really see what I'm doing there. There we go. Probably going to end up cheating and just heating the legs of these caps to pull them out. Although well, the big ones should come off with any luck. Are the legs loose? Nope. You know, let's try that again. Now I have got my um, my noise suppression completely deactivated today, so you should be able to hear all of my kit as it sounds, rather than as a sort of muted sound. There we go. Try my hot air gun at a higher temperature as well. It's just not. I don't know. I don't know. This. Uh, see if it. See if it's loose. Yeah, it just doesn't do it. Fine.
Not my preferred way to get caps off that, but <laughs> it works. Really doesn't want to come. Absolutely does not want to come. Uh, all right, let's try again. Might have done it. Yep, I guess that did it. There's just one leg of this capacitor right here that's kind of clinging on. Right there. There we go. Not anymore. Get back to that as well. You didn't miss much, Wayne. Not really. It's just um, just me cleaning up different PCBs. That's all. a bit crooked, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. Let's uh, let's do something about this. Yeah, it should be easy to fix. I don't know. I'm sure it was fine, but I just kind of want it to be neater. So let's make it neater. in shot it is oh. what has happened there what is that That was a slight defect on that component I just desoldered. It was like another leg on it. Must have been like that since the factory, actually. I mean, it w won't harm it, but. Yeah. Interesting.
Alright, there we go. There is a chap that likes to say better than factory on YouTube. But I think in this case, this actually is better than factory. Because it actually is now properly aligned and doesn't have a random piece of metal that shouldn't be there stuck in the solder. <laughs> yeah, Wayne, my desoldering gun, it's not brilliant if I'm honest. Like, I, I spend more time, like, trying to get components up. I guess maybe I need better nozzles. Or a new set of nozzles, or maybe I'm using the wrong size. Probably the wrong size. Okay, I've got fibers everywhere. Now then, let's clear these holes a little bit of whatever rubbish is in them. So, it's only really that one that needs clearing. Let's look at the others. Yeah, they ain't too bad, but they could do with a little bit of a little bit of a going over. Why not? Yeah, it's funny, I actually do find surface mount soldering way easier than through hole, if only because it's easier to get things on and off than it is with uh, THT, right? There we go. I'm also thinking of taking a look at an SNES, a SNES. I've got a few that aren't working. I've got one that's crashing on games, and I've no idea what's wrong with that. If I had to guess, I'd say probably either a faulty chip, maybe, or possibly a poor connection on one of the data lines or something like that. Let's check the chat. So, Wayne says, looking at your blue mat and then mind I'm feeling oddly smug at how clean they come up with a nice wet wipe. Little things please, little mice. You know, funnily enough, I was just about to clean mine up. But a wet wipe won't do you any good if you've got flux on it. Because flux doesn't really come off with uh, water. You've got to use IPA, really. You know, after a wipe, it's still mucky. So what do you guys think? Do you think I should carry on with the game gears, or do you think I should try something a bit different? What do you reckon? Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, um... Let's really be an animal. Uh, I, could, I could really annoy Jason. I can just, you know, I can just do a few things like this. Just, We'll mix that in. We'll put that there. And then we'll put this here. 
And like, by now, I imagine Jason's like looking at this and he's going a bit mental, going, Good God, what's he doing? You know, like just by doing this. And then maybe we'll put that there. And yeah, we'll, we'll just lie this here and we'll put that there. And I guarantee this is going to wig Jason out now. This, this should wig Jason out a bit. If I put that there as well, and maybe we'll just put... Oh, this this should this should wig people out a bit. Random capacitors. There we go. That should do the job. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, anyway. I'll stop trying to, like, trip up people's... Um, OCD. <laughs> Organise my space a little bit at least. Alright, I guess I can put this in the box of relatively cleaned up things. So we'll put that in there. Um, right, so. Right, I'm, I'm going to put it to. Um, Oh, killer label! That's a brilliant idea. If if I was to um, if I was to have a label, the problem is it would involve me at. Oh, oh, you know what, guys? You know what? I've got just the thing. You see, at one point in time, I did label a box. So you can see there there is a label on this. It's not a very good label, as you can see, but you know it's. Yeah, let's get let's get rid of it. We don't want that. We don't want that on there, do we? Oh, look at that! Oh, look look at this old label. We'll just destroy it. You know, we'll get. Yeah, let's get rid of it. No one wants this label. There we go. There we go. You see what I've done, Jason? You see what I've done? <laughs> The uh, the Metallica I'm, "Am I Evil" song that comes to mind now, you know. <laughs> right. Anyway, peeps. Question: Am I am I going to take a look at one of these? Am I going to take a look at? One of these. Shame about the meltage on that one. Or maybe... Maybe one of these. Or do I carry on with the stack of these? So, you know... I, yeah, well, I have a label. I do have a label. What what am I working on? What am I working on, peeps? What am I working on? That's the question. What am I working on? Am I continuing the recap job? I mean, I have complete freedom on this. Take your pick. So we got one for SNES. Yeah, we got two for okay. Looks like we're going for a snares. All right, all right. What did I just tune into? Oh, you tuned into my madness. That's what you tuned into. So actually, if we're going for us, we're going for a snares. We've got a few. So I suspect this one's probably fairly simple. This one, not sure. Um, yeah, I guess. Next step, we'll pick one of them. So let's pick, let's pick, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. catch a baby by its toe, if it cries, let it go, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Alright, we're going with the crashes one. Alrighty. I know I've got screwdrivers around.
Oh, wait, wait, so we got, oh, oh, okay. Okay, let's, let's do it. Oh, these all look like game bit. Okay. So they're all game bit bits. I'll put these in here, actually. Come on, come out. I think I just need to magnetize this a bit. This is like ASMR gone wrong, isn't it? Magnetizing a game bit. There we are. Alright. Swap you a SNES for an MS2. Well... The thing is about that... You see... Yeah, I have one. Or two. Okay. <laughs> what else is going on in the chat? Crashes is going to be intermittent. No. Uh, not really. It it really does crash relatively frequently. I suspect... I'll demonstrate that in a minute, actually. I'll have to grab a power supply and hook it up to my OSSC, but that's not a problem. I will demonstrate how that fault looks. It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a weird one. Honestly. You know what, come to think of it, I don't think my RGB cable works for capture. That's a good point, isn't it? I think I've got an NTSC RGB lead. I probably need to modify that and remove whatever capacitors are in it so it will work in the PAL region. I always thought these looked cool inside. Right. They do look cool. But yeah, with this, I suspect that the crashing is probably caused by um, poor solder joints under the cartridge slot. You know, you can imagine years and years of putting a game in, taking a game out, putting a game in, taking it out. It's probably going to do some damage. Like mechanical stress to the solder joints underneath. That's my guess. Now I do need to take this off. And so I'll pop that in the top of the snares. There we go. Yeah, the SNES is pretty cool, actually. It's got some pretty nice games on it. And you know when you upscale these with a OSSC or similar, any other decent upscaler, they actually do look pretty damn good. Like, some of this, some of the games on the SNES, they kind of look like, when they've been integer upscaled properly, they look like they were made recently. Like, they look like they were retro games made recently to look like retro games, if that makes sense. I'm not sure it does make sense, but I don't know. Maybe you know what I'm trying to say.
Now I guess we'll see if this will be an easy fix or not. I don't know. I have no idea. There we go. So most commonly on the SNES, um, it's the bottom of the cartridge port that starts to go. That really doesn't want to come out. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Right, okay. Well, at least that one came out. Whoops. All right, that got it. Okay. Progress were made. So let's see what screws do we need to undo. If we want to get at everything, we're going to undo those two and that one. So, yeah, okay. I gotta undo the 7805 as well. I always forget about this. Man, so many of these older consoles use the 7805 regs. Here we go, we're in. We're in. Yeah, if you take a look, the uh, the, the SNES motherboard's pretty simple, right? There's not that much on it. You know, you've got the uh, PPUs, you've got uh, the RAM, I think, CPU. I'm guessing that's the video RAM. Display chip for the output. Yeah, there are... They're a fairly, uh, they're a fairly straightforward little design. You can see as well some of these chips are Sony branded. Yeah, you probably can't see that that well. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Sixty-four was a great console. What are you on about, RB King? You've gone crazy. You've gone nuts. I got a 64 with no display, port good, wires good, so you think the 72 pin or however many it is. I don't do retro stuff really. Uh, okay, find it, fix it. Um, I've never actually touched a 64, but I would say. 
could possibly be one of the picture processing unit chips. I assume I'm not really sure what the 64 has in that in that regard. So what we're going to do here anyway is give this a good old fashioned blast of uh, hot air. This is my first stop when I touched snazzes. Yeah, it looks like that's all going nice and shiny. The problem with intermittent crashing is it can be anything, right? Like, I have loaded this before and it will get about as far as the um, Street Fighter 2 Turbo game, which is like the only SNES game I've actually got. It'll get about as far as the menu screen and then it just sort of, you know, falls over. But the single most common issue with these is this connector on reflowing right now. Might be all it needs. I'll have to go get the RGB cable in a minute. We're probably going to have to mod that as well actually, like on screen, just to get this thing to show. <laughs> that could be a fun little uh, side diversion. I've been meaning to do it for a while anyway, so... Alright, I think that's properly replayed by now. So what we got in the chat? Um, yeah, I'm not really sure find it fix it. I'm I'm really not. Like it could be it could be so many things, right? You know, each problem's unique to a console, you know, it's it's never necessarily the same thing, right? Okay, we've reflowed that anyway, so next step is probably to clean out this. I mean, half of my just to throw this straight into the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll do a bit of mechanical cleaning though, I guess. Why not? So if we just flood it with IPA... Unintentional ASMR. Oh no! Oh no! I actually did promise one of these to my brother. I've been uh, I've been meaning to get around to getting one done for my brother for a while now. Next thing we're going to do, by the way, is get this, uh, we're going to get it under the scope and just inspect the board and see how everything looks. Looks dusty, but it doesn't look bad, from what I can tell. So that's that side, that's that side. We will take a look inside that as well, because sometimes you can get, um, deformation on these where like one side will be making contact one side won't on the inside and in fact I think my mate Vince did a vi very similar video where he had one that was warped on a uh, on a Mega Drive 
does happen. Good channel, my mate Vince as well. He's got uh, he's got some really great content. You know what? I'm not entirely sure where my RGB cable for the SNES is. Might be plugged into the PlayStation. I'll have to have a look in a minute. Okay. Let's take a look at this under the scope. Let's see how this board looks. First of all, I'm going to check around there. Uh, I'm going to check around the chips. So that looks to be fine at a glance. Check all the pins while we're at it. Good, 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 good. Okay. Solder joints look fine. Cap looks fine. Actually, I don't know what this potentiometer's for. Perhaps we're adjusting the clock. Is that how that works? S clock. There's our crystal. There's a potentiometer. Yeah, that might be responsible for something on the clock line. Interesting. Okay. I might have to check the clock on this. Could be the clock's just slightly off and needs tweaking. That could be interesting. Check all the solder joints. You never know with age, right? Sometimes these just end up with cold joints and they come loose and Well, I think this is okay. I do actually have some spare SNES chips as well. So that's some good news. We might. We do have donor parts if we need them. Hmm. Now look at that. I don't know if that's just... I don't know if that's just stuff on the solder mask or what. Let's see uh, how well focused that is on the... Yeah, I'm going to meter that out. I'm not too sure on that. Well, I wonder if I knew where my meter was. Well, it was right next to me. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's do some checks. So I'll go with continuity mode for this. We'll check between each set of pins, I think. Because this doesn't look great, does it? So, okay, so if we follow that pin, it goes there, Do 
you know there's quite a lot of um, looks like oxidation on the pins as well maybe some of these ain't making the best contact huh okay well we'll keep going around we'll see what else we can see that that was fine we've got continuity so okay So far, so good. Let's look at the CPU. See, the CPU has nice shiny solder joints. They haven't... Um, they haven't oxidized like some of the others. Perhaps it's the ones closest to the cartridge port where the opening on the console is that have gone a bit funny. So PPU1 is connected to PPU2. I assume this is some kind of logic chip, I don't know. Reset switch. Alrighty. We got here. Sound encoder. Looks okay. Could be we've got a bad chip on here, you know. It's either a bad connection on that card slot or a bad chip. And kinda hard to diagnose when it's an intermittent fault as well. Definitely what looks like a bit of uh, damage to the top of the solder mask here. Do you see? See what I'm talking about right there? I'm not sure how well that shows. But well, it looks like minor corrosion. So. Where does that go? I think it goes to one of these. That track's fine then. I mean, it does look like there's a little bit of corrosion on this corner here. So that's not too bad. Hmm. Hmm. Right, well I guess what I should do... Oh wait, hang on. These caps. I bet you it's these caps. Look at these. Yeah, that's a telltale sign of some... Um, that's cap leakage. We got a cap. I wonder if that's why. Maybe it just doesn't quite have a stable power supply. Yeah. I mean, they are old caps. Oh, look at that beefy bad boy. Yeah, these two are definitely gone. Look at that. 
not sure if I have any that match that spec. Is that 10 volt? Is that 10 microfarad? Is that 10 volt? Hmm. Yeah, I might have to pop these off. Yeah, that one's not leaked. Those two have leaked. Yeah, I think this one's probably crashing because of those caps. That would be my guess. I guess we can take them off. Um, flux. Where's my flux? Fluxy, fluxy. Yeah, fluxy, 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 fluxy. <laughs> Have I gone blind? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, absolutely telltale giveaway that that's no good. Yeah, Wayne, it looks like exactly the same pattern you see on those Game Gear power uh, audio boards with their surface mount. When they leak, they leak from the bottom because there's no vent on the top of these caps which I guess makes sense so I'm going to pop these two off and hopefully hopefully that might help so I get that in shot Yep, definitely gone that cap, absolutely. Let's get the other one into view. You can tell that's, yeah. I'm probably going to have to test all the caps on this board then. Yeah, look at the state of that. Not so great, is it? It's always capacitors. <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> Just look that way. Where'd I put my flux? There it is. <laughs> Cramping my foot. <sighs> At least I've got a feeling these will clean up much easier. Right. You know, whenever you see caps like this, like if, if one or two are going, they're probably all going. And I may or may not have caps I can use for this. I don't have any surface mount, but I can always adapt the through-hole caps I've got. 
But yeah, looking at these pads, look at that. Like, we can see that those have definitely popped their guts. You know. You can tell just by the uh, sort of weird black gunk. Particularly at the ed edge of the pads. So, let's give this a go. Okay. When in doubt. Oh, look at that. That's actually corroded all the way through. That's not stuff I can scrape off. That's... Yeah, we've lost some pad to those. Have we lost... Is that whole trace gone? Or is there still trace under that? That don't look so good, does it? So it's definitely melted some of these pads. And look at that. We've lost a... I think we've just got a... I think this is just hanging on by a thread here, but it's hard to tell. I'm not sure if that's been worked on before. Um, let's just scratch some away. Oh man, it's just crumbling right off. That, uh... Them leaky caps. They've done a number on that. Look at that, it's just coming right off. I think we might have found the uh, source of the problem with this machine. Seems okay. Seems okay. Okay. I think this has had a repair before. Looking at that, that looks like somebody's had solder mask on this before, doesn't it? Like, yeah, I think somebody's applied solder mask to this previously done a repair on it and then whatever the new caps are have spilled up their guts as well by the look of it. I mean this... Well actually no, because look. Well that's unusual isn't it? If you look at this, this is not stock solder mask right clearly. Like look at this solder mask versus this. Like it doesn't... It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit the rest of it. But... Look at that. The silk screen goes over the top of what looks like a repair job. I wonder if this was a factory repair job. Maybe the board was just slightly um, slightly off and then they've done a botch repair. I don't know. Either that or the leaking caps has just damaged and bubbled it all up. But it's just strange that it looks like it's just been painted on, right? Interesting. Very interesting, that. Huh. Now I'm pretty sure those pads are gone, yeah. So we've still got plenty of pad to solder to, at least. Hmm. 
There's no big deal. Do 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 do. Crusty. Like the clown. I think I'm going to repair the uh, solar mask I took off there. But what I am going to do is, because I'm not 100% happy with the way that trace looks, it's not the worst in the world, I'm going to coat it with a very light amount of solder. take it off with solder wick and that will leave us a nice thin protective layer on top there we go now I'll put some New solder mask over it, I think. I think that's the way to go. I know Sega Home have done bodges and fixes at the factory. It reminds me of the Mega Drive Factory 6800 pin 6 resistor mod. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. When I first saw that, I, I, I thought somebody would. I tried to mod the console, but no, apparently not. You're dead right there, RW. Dead right. It's kind of funny that um, they used to do fac factory bodge jobs like that. You don't get that so much anymore, because I guess the factories are far more automated than they used to be, right? I'm just cleaning this area here and it looks like it looks like the solder mask has taken damage in areas and it makes me wonder like is there damage to the tracks? so if we get that I think that's okay now I'm going to check it I think I'm just being paranoid now, but... Yeah, just being paranoid. They're fine. Okay. Uh, I want to get a bit of solder mask on this. Do I have any on my desk, or is it in a box? It might be in a box. quiet today. No biggie. No big. It is Sunday. There we go, I've got a solder mask and I know I've got a laser somewhere. 
There it is. No point leaving damage on there, is there? So let's take that back a bit. Let's get that cured now, shall we? Yep, it is certainly a Monday, and the bank holiday Monday at that. Yeah, I don't know where, how, like, how the weather is where you guys are, but where I'm based, it's a bit grim outside. It's been raining all day, it's windy. Welcome Jaden. Welcome. Ah, uh, it's always riveting. Oh yeah, I guess I did say it was Sunday. Yeah, I just, you know, it feels like a Sunday. To be fair, I do that sober, right? I didn't even know it was a bank holiday on Friday until one of my colleagues mentioned it to me. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, brilliant, nice. <laughs> Come on already, cure. Well, you know what? At least, um, at least we're getting precious range. You know, it means we got all the fresh water we need, right? And those breweries need all the fresh water they can get, so that they can brew us all delicious beer. So that when we're all vaccinated, we can uh, we can drink the delicious beer in the pub.
I do miss the pub. You know what? I do. Uh, yeah, I miss the I miss the pub. I miss those like midnight finishes with a mate of mine, like staggering into like a TJ's, like opposite the pub, like basically half passing out with my face smushed against the glass where they keep all of the uh, what they think is salad but is actually just a sad approximation of salad usually it's just a like half a bucket of onions some tomatoes and for some reason they think cabbage is salad but whatever and then the guy behind the uh, counter he, he, he looks at me and my mate and he knows he knows we're gonna stand there trying to decide what we want whether it's gonna be pizza or a kebab or a burger and like if he starts getting tired of me and my mate trying to decide, he'll go, oh, well, you know what? Why don't you get a kebab? So you sort of stand there, face smushed up against the glass. You start sliding down the side of the front where they can t like have all of that um, fresh salad. And uh, then you're aroused from your drunken stupor when the smell of the kebab starts wafting off the grills into your nostrils and that brings you back to life and it's just enough to push you to get home so that then you can scoff down your kebab and um, no doubt in the morning be begin your perilous assault on the rim of the toilet bowl you know fun times that's fun times that's what it does that's what I miss about the pub I do, Mr. Pub. That and the many nights of um, getting so drunk that I just chain smoked and chain smoked and made myself feel like trash the next day. Yeah. I miss all of it. <laughs> Yep, that's that first batch is cured. But yeah, that's why I miss the pub. Actually, I also miss the Weatherspoons' brunch burgers, but I don't think they do that anymore. You know, who doesn't want a fried egg on a cheeseburger with bacon and salad? Salad's optional. Don't need that. I think it comes with an onion ring on it as well. Ah. Uh. truly is the end times when you can't stagger into a Weatherspoons after a sort of a pub crawl and order like a brunch burger at like 10 or 11 p.m. before they stop serving food whatever time that is <laughs> oh I'm talking from experience Wayne totally do you have any plans on selling fume extractors um it's something I could do, but honestly, there isn't much point, and I'll explain why there's not much point. So, the fume extractor I've been designing, the PLA it takes to print it is about 340 grams, and that's just for the top part of the shell, right? Like, the bottom part of the shell is going to be heavier, so it's probably all in going to be somewhere around maybe six to seven hundred grams of PLA plastic spool and that alone is about 20 pounds just for the raw material and then to print it takes around about 24 24 to 48 hours 3d printing is not fast and um, 
after that you need to post process it you know you need to sand bits you need to get things so that they can fit nicely together and so on you need to deburr the edges of the plastic so that you're not going to um, either cut yourself on it or, or whatever just to make sure things can also slot in together and then you need to buy the electronics so you'd need an Arduino like the Uno which is what I've got you can get those for about a fiver on AliExpress with shipping which isn't too bad but then you're also going to need a 12 volt power supply you're going to need a fan a blower fan specifically to move the uh, solar fumes and so on you're going to need a tube like the one I've bought and by the time you've factored in all that cost you're probably looking at anywhere in the region of about 50 to 60 quid just for the materials now if I was to sell these obviously I'd be selling them for more than that because you know it it's kind of involved right there's also labor cost to it and a time cost and when you start getting into that territory you might as well buy one of the um, pre-made cottos or something like that now the cottos they are going to be more expensive than what I just rattled off but you need to bear in mind that it's just ready to go it's together if I was to price the solar fume extractor I've been designing in that kind of price bracket and sell them on to people I'd either be undervaluing my time or undervaluing my materials it wouldn't really be economically worth doing for me that's why it's open source and people are just you know gonna have the option to download things and do it that way right but yeah there's certainly there's certainly a cost associated with it which is more than just you know what I'm doing I'll actually show you that in a minute guys if you're interested I think we've pretty much cured that solar mass but let me show you guys I'll show you while I'm at it So, this is where we're at so far with it. So that's the lid. You know, there's nothing complex to it. I'm actually going to glue on some clips and stuff. I did have them initially on the printed design. I'll show you the failed one in a minute as well. It's a nice solid though. You know, that's you're not going to break that easily it's, it's tough it's a tough print you know easily as tough as this crappy extractor that doesn't really work for me there but yeah you know you get, you get this piping which I bought this off AliExpress it's basically uh, automotive um, heat piping right like it's lined with aluminium it's, it's rigid it holds its shape you know if I well, I can bend this into different shapes and it, it holds its position so it's good stuff you know and the idea is this will just sit on top of the uh, extractor unit and uh, it will just pull the air through and if we take a look at some of the internal parts for it um, that's the blower I'm going to be using And you know what, I don't know where I put the Arduino, but it doesn't really matter. But basically what we do is we um, we wire this up to, um, to a power supply that can provide, according to this, at least 6 amps. So if we take a look at that, where is it? 6 amps, 12 volts. So we need a 12 volt, at least 6 amp power supply. I'm surprised this would take 6 amps. You'd think it would only be about 2 or 3, maybe tops. Six amps is ridiculous. 
But apparently this thing runs at like 7,500 RPM, so it's probably going to sound like a small jet. But the idea is it's going to sit inside the uh, extractor, pull air through. There'll be a little 3D printed tray on top that you'll be able to actually put this kind of material into the tray that sits over this, and then it'll pull the, uh, the junk through this. What I'm thinking is um, using HEPA material, you know, like maybe off of... Uh, vacuum cleaner bags or something like that because the HEPA material should do a much better job of uh, actual filtration of PM 2.5 particles ideally. Now I've got charcoal all over my work area but yeah I, I, I think you guys get the idea um, I mean if people do want them 3D printing I can do that and I could sell them but again it's one of those where, from an economic standpoint, it might not be worth you buying, if that makes sense. I mean, if you just want to do it to support me in the channel, then that's different. That's fine, you know. But it does take a long time to print. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll show you that failure in a second. Would the big chunky ones from a Mac do? That looks like the blower from a Dell USSF Optiplex machine. Yeah, it probably is. It's, it's a Delta fan. They're often used in servers. Um, yeah, this one's a failed one. I had a bad time with this. You can see it on that. Like It had support structures on the inner ring. And I couldn't get the support structures out, so I tried to drill it out, but it, I didn't have much luck, as you can tell. This is rock solid as well. You can beat someone with this. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys get the, get the general idea of what, what it is I'm aiming to do. Um, yeah, so that's the soldery thingy, solder fume extractor thing I'm building. I am doing um, a series of videos on that, like it will be getting a bit of a, a bit of a focus. ASA Lowell, welcome to the party. <laughs> Testicles. <laughs> you never change, do you? Do you, Mr. Sean? <laughs> yeah okay anyway I think we got this uh, SNES more or less good to take some caps I need to figure out exactly what um, what caps those were and whether I have any and what the polarity was <laughs> I didn't check that whoops Never mind. Anyway, anyway, folks, I'm just going to take a short break. I'll be back in about two minutes or so. Um, I'm just going to I'm going to put the intermission screen on, so you guys can enjoy the uh, vaguely pornographic sound of the 1980s. And uh, when I'm back, um, yeah, we shall continue.
Right, I'm back. I did a bit of searching around to find a few bits I needed for this. So, this is um, this is my RGB cable, and this RGB cable it fades to black on the SNES. It's not supposed to, but that's because it's uh, designed for NTSC, I believe. So, we should be able to modify this NTSC SCART connector to work with PAL properly. So, that means opening it up. I've no idea how to open it, and I don't want to break it, opening it, but, uh, oh, that was easy. So, all we need to do with this is, um, remove these capacitors and solder directly onto the pins the capacitors are on. So, should be a relatively easy modification for us to do. You know, there's nothing complex about these, uh, RGB cables. Um... So if we get a closer look, you can sort of see here we've got these caps and they've, you know, it's it's a pretty it's pretty cheap, right? You can tell this is a cheap cable, but that's not a problem. We can work with that. So we'll just pop that out, and uh, we'll we'll mod that right now. It should be nice and simple. You know, you can buy the uh, pack-a-punch cables and stuff like that, and those, they're, they're decent cables, but they're not worth the money. Not when you can mod these for, you know, five or ten minutes work. And you can see the cables are actually RGB. So whoever wired this did a reasonable job of it. And again, these caps, they are necessary, but only on uh, NTSC-based systems. So, that's just something to bear in mind. Um, hmm. like that. Let me just grab my wire snippers. Well, not snippers, strippers even. There we 
we go. Little fiddly this. Ah, come on. Stop sliding around. Alright, so that's the that's R done. For G and B. I like strippers, where are they? Seconded. Well, you know, right there is is the strippers. I'm sure they'll uh, keep you happy for years, you know. Pro tip with them strippers, don't get too drunk because uh, you might have a, a really bad time with them. They'll mess up everything for you. You know, at least these, at least this RGB cable was quite easy to take apart. I'm quite grateful for that. Okay, yeah, that solder joint seems all right. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's take a look at the chat. So I have an RGB scalp cable where the picture is great, the sound is pretty bad noise, like the shielding is trash, at least for the sound. But even some of them can have dodgy smell. So an RGC one would actually be an upgrade as opposed to a homemade eBay seller job. Would you say the case gear iron is worth it? Absolutely, Jaden, yeah, I've got three of them. And I'd absolutely say they're worth it, yeah. Completely. Versus the old style irons, yeah, they're great. And they're relatively comparable to uh, Hakko, particularly if you get Hakko bits for it. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say they're worth it. Completely. If you're wondering whether you should get one and you're using one of the older style... Um, soldering irons, just go for it. Honestly, you, you won't regret it. You really won't. Oh, nuts. What? Ow, 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 that's burning. All right, there we go. That 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 RGB cable should now be good. So let's put it back together. Is 
assuming I can remember how it went back together. Let me zoom out so you guys can see a little better. There we go. If I kill that, I might even be able to. Yeah, there we go. S.A. Lowell, I hear you like mudkips. <laughs> you got to watch that S.A. Lowell guy. He's a bit of a... Um, He's a bit of a dangerous one, you know. You take your eye off him for a second. And that's it. Uh, I think that's right. I don't know. Is that right? No, that's probably not right. Come on. Is that right? That, yeah, that feels good. Okay. Oh wait, I forgot the screw thingy. There's that. Right at the bottom of the cable. This feels so like rickety. <laughs> See you, Wayne. Have a good one. The tip glows red. What tip are you using? Did you calibrate the set? Did you calibrate the iron? You do have to calibrate it. Okay, not sure if good or not. Where is the open source scan converter? Let's see if it is. Yep, that's good. Alrighty. Cables are good. Now, what I do need to do is find out what capacitors I took off those bad capacitors on this board. So, I'm going to look that up right now, or I'm going to look at. Actually, no, I've got a. Uh, I do have a donor board right here, don't I? Hmm. 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 I do like the uh, PAL Super Nintendo. I think the PAL Super Nintendo looks a lot better than the NTSC Region 1, but maybe I'm just biased. So it's these two caps. What are they? To be fair, these caps look salvageable actually. Let's get them under the scope. Oh! 
Oh, thank you very much, Wayne. Really appreciate it. Thanks a ton for that. That's really awesome. Do, 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 do. Now, let's see if we can get these capacitors off. It can be kind of tricky to get these surface mount capacitors off without using hot air, but if you use hot air, you won't be able to rescue them. But if you use an iron like this and you come in from the side, you may be able to pull it up a bit. But it can be very, very tricky. So you sort of lift a bit like that. And then you kind of have to rock it out a little bit. It's kind of hard to describe this. It was the one that came with it and never messed with the settings. Well, that shouldn't, um, that shouldn't really interfere with it. I don't know, that's a strange one. That's a strange one. Come on. going on here? Well, that's probably usable. And looking at it, it looks like they were both negative facing to the left as well, which is good to know. So what I do need to know is what these caps are. I have an ESR meter that should tell me the capacitance. They are rated on top. I think they're 10 volt. I think they're 10 volt. Or 10 microfarad, 50 volt, I think. I think they're 10 microfarad, 50 volt, but I'm not sure. Let's check the tech wiki. So this board revision is, this is a, what is this? What board revision are you, Mr. Board Board? SNSP CPU 01. Yeah, Jaden, I can say for sure, it is not normal for your tip to get red hot. Like, this is my, th my iron right now, this is running at 385C, which is on the hot side. It is running at 385, I've calibrated the tips. It sounds to me like you've got some kind of runaway thermals. Just look those caps up. They're 10 microfarad, 25 volts, and 50 volts respectively. I might actually have some of those 
in radial form, but radial should do the job. So I'm just going to go through my massive supplier caps and see if we can find ones that will do the job. So I said 10 microfarad. Okay. I have a lot of caps to go through. That's 10 microfarad at 25 volts. And I do need a 10 at 50 at least as well. 50 volts, so that's fine there. I'm just going through like an absolute mountain, absolute mountain of capacitors. So we flip over to the camera view, and then we just shove that out of the way. Nope. 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 Come on, I need high voltage. Nope. Nope. Oh. Right voltage, wrong capacitance. Alright, so we don't quite have what we need. Oh, there's my ASR meter, excellent. I was wondering where that was. I forgot I put it in the toolbox. So we'll leave that out because I need those. This is what I get for keeping things in a toolbox, you know. For once I put something where it should probably live and then, you know. <laughs> now I have another box of capacitors somewhere nearby, I know that. Maybe I'll put them in here. Ah, yes. What do we have? 25 volts at 100. 50 volt one. 10 at 16. 1 at 50. 2.2 at 50. 2.2 at 50. 100 at 6.3. 100 at 10. Come on, don't tell me I'm just missing one capacitor type. That would be so typical. 10 microfarad at 35 volts. What do I need? I think I need a 10 at 50. You didn't miss too much. Um, no, not really. Right now, I'm on the hunt for uh, capacitors. Because I'm convinced I've got one that will uh, that will go on this. Let me just check what this is. Fifty volts at ten microfarad. Yes, yes. Okay, the repairs can continue. Let me just double check which one's which. Fifty-nine is twenty-five volts. Okay. 
Which, huh, wouldn't you know it. So who's this? Okay. Let's check. What do we have? We have... Negative left. Oh, nuts. I forgot it's these ones, isn't it? It's these ones that don't have the strike. Hey. Okay. Long legs are positive. Let me just check any of these. So the side with text on these is negative, okay. Alright. There we go, we'll get this under the scope. So to do this, I'm going to tip my iron and just sort of tack it down. Like I so. Easier said than done, this. There we go. Come in with a snippers and clean up that excess leg. Like so. <laughs> if I can get into this, I'll snip this too. Can I? Is that where I want it? Uh, no. There we go. I know, I know, I shouldn't really be using THT caps as surface mount, but you know. Strange looking game gear. Yep, snares RW, absolutely. There's one that crashes when loading games, and I noticed there was a bunch of corrosion around these two caps in particular on the board, so I'm just replacing them. There we go. And then we've just got uh, one more cap to install, I think. Which 
just one of these. No, I'm just snipping its legs now and then you'll see it drop into place. Once again, I do my tacking method where I just tip the iron with solder. I don't care if it makes a good solder joint, I just want to hold the cap down. Come on. Foo. <sighs> Nuts, come on. Yep, that ought to do it. That's the thing really, you don't need to use surface mount electrolytics. And the nice thing about radials is they'll work in anything. There we go. Look at that. Message retracted, message retracted, message retracted. Everything okay, RW? You just accidentally typing messages there. I wasn't taking a look at what you said. I assume you just made a mistake. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of using um, through hole caps in place of surface but you know it doesn't really matter hopefully though this should be enough to um, get this old SNES back up and running again with any luck I mean we've got rid of the corrosion on the board now we've got this soldered in with uh, fix a damaged solder mask I'm gonna meter out these before I try powering it on just to make sure everything's good But I think we're looking okay. North American snares that played one of the Super Mario World Lever Select music tracks without any game and said, What? Serious? Whoa! How would it do that? Because that's stored on the cartridge. Like, how would it, how would it have... Huh. How would that happen? Because, like... All of the BGM musics and things like that on a, on a cartridge, they're loaded in, like... Yeah, they're, they're loaded in at runtime from the ROM, from the car. Like, yeah, I don't. Like, how would that happen? How would that even happen, right? Yeah, no, no worries about the mistake, out of you. I just wondered what was going on. I, you know, that's all. Nothing major. As long as everything's okay. Why is there flux around this? Did I do that? Or does somebody else do that? 
Maybe that cap's been replaced. I think some of these caps have been replaced as they've failed, you know. Maybe. Is that new? Yeah, that's old flux. That's not me. Okay. I guess somebody didn't believe in cleaning. Now, I don't remember when I last switched this thing on. It must have been quite a while ago, but I'm going to short out. Assuming I can. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to short out the legs of this thing. Um, I think. My pliers. I'm the only mistake. <laughs> I say, Lowell, you ain't no mistake, bro. You ain't no mistake. Okay, that's drained. Hopefully. Yes, I'll meet a time. Let's get on to camera mode. Let's, um, let's show what's going on. Great. Great. Come on, pick up the... Seriously? Okay, that's good. I can't get this one to read. I don't know if there's anything wrong with a cap or if it's just the probes. Hmm. Yeah, let's go test the others. Good. Possibly not good, not sure. Very difficult to get a reading on this one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Good.
ESR is high on that. I'll try for a second reading. Hmm, interesting. Let's try this other cap over here. struggling to get it to read. Hmm. Let's check on the chat though. You've never heard of the Super Nintendo, Jaden, really? Wow, you know what? If I get this running, which I should because I've modified that RGB cable now, I can use this as an input on the uh, PC, which I'll be doing in a in a few minutes because I'm not far off testing. You'll see how cool this thing is. This is one of the cooler consoles. I'm amazed you've not heard of what a Super Nintendo is, but you know what? Doesn't matter how old you are, this thing's got some absolutely fantastic games on it, particularly Chrono Trigger. SA Lowell, back me up here. Come on, read. Read. I can't tell if this is a bad cat or if it's just my probes. Um. Hmm. You know what? Bugger it. Let's add a bit of extra solder to it. Let's see if that's built up the solder enough for me to make an actual contact with this and actually test this cap. You don't know what any of these are. Where am I? Yep, good. Yep, that's about right. Okay, that's good as well. That cap's fine. All right. Yeah, basically SA level, I don't know where you are. I don't know where I am either. I think um I think this might be Alpha Centauri. Depends how diamond handed you are, I guess. Is it Alpha Centauri? I think I got as far as my backyard. Okay. Progress were made. Now I've already cleaned this, so and I've reflowed the back joints on this, so let's get this back on. And then what we need is a way to put this on. By the way, if any of you are wondering, uh, S.A. Lowell, he's a, he's a good old friend of mine. He just can't remember, because, um, yeah. 
he's a bit special. <laughs> he forgets who he is sometimes. It's, it's normal. He'll, he'll get he'll get round. He'll, he'll eventually figure it out. When he figures it out, he'll probably panic. He usually does. Right, so what I need now is I need a couple of power supplies for this absolute mess. So I need a SNES power supply and a video lead, so let's get the video lead plugged in. Step one complete. Step two, plug it into OSSC. Whatever step that was complete. Uh, oh no. What's the uh Oh yeah, I do need one of these. This is some crazy jank setup now. Look at this mess. <laughs> it's an absolute trash heap now. Uh, crikey, crikey! That dingo stole my baby! Turns out I do have a power cord for that. Now, if this explodes when I switched it on, um, I didn't do it. You didn't see me do it, and you can't prove a thing. Although it didn't blow up yet, so that's a good sign. I need the OSSC power supply. I don't know where I put it. It's probably right in front of me. Or is it? Yeah, it probably is. Hang on. Are these worth a lot, Super Nintendos? Not hugely. They will be, but not right now. You give it another 10 years, they'll be worth probably in the region of maybe 100 to 150 pounds, something like that. But objectively, no, they're not worth that much. But you know, these old Super Nintendos, they deserve to be rescued. They are a part of the history of gaming that makes gaming great. They are a really good machine. Sorry guys, I'm just so... I, I know I've got a power supply for my open source scan converter somewhere in in the area. Let me, uh, give me a moment. I think this might be it. That's 5 volts, 2 amps. And what does this require? No, I think this is it. I have far too many plugs in use. And then what we'll do is we'll unplug the microscope.
Ha ha, I've got a good game to test. Sink. We have something. Interesting, so we got some garbled graphics. Okay. Now that's interesting. Okay, so that's the problem we must have been facing. I guess the dodgy cap wasn't the source of the issue. It smells like electric. <laughs> ah, now interesting. I tapped the cartridge and that went off. Maybe, maybe, maybe it is just a cartridge. Oh wow, that 7805 voltage regulator is scorching hot. That is scorching. Let me just leave this switched off for a minute because obviously this 7805 it really should be sat up against the um, RF shield like this and it should ideally have some thermal compound on it and it doesn't. So I'm just going to let that cool off for a second. Yeah, yeah, SA Lowell, you're right. It is just as I remember it as well actually, completely. Like, no different at all. I remember having many a good gaming session with um, those legit graphics that we just saw. <laughs> okay. You cooled down enough? Yep. And my RGB cable mod worked. So that's good. Right, let's flip back over to the scope. It's not really the scope at the minute. Okay. That's interesting. I wonder which chip's doing that. No, right, let's turn it off.
So my suspicions are that it's one of the PPU chips failing. That would be my guess, but it might not be a complete failure. It might be something a little less horrific, shall we say. It might just be as simple as a quick reflow will get it up and running. So what we'll do now is we'll reflow all the chips. Um, which won't take long if I can find my flux. But clearly I've created such a mess around myself now that this is getting like unbelievably ridiculous. There it is. There was a time when I burnt Super Mario Kart and the entire game was full of random pallets in random places. I also remember the music sounding like Satan one of the times I bumped it. Yeah, probably sounds about right. So I think it's one of these PPUs, personally. Now I reckon that because these PPUs they're in an area that receives mechanical stress. It may be that they just don't have the best connection anymore. But I'm going to do basically all the chips. Because honestly, why not? Why not? The only thing we can do is make it worse. Yeah, I never had a I never had an SNES growing up. I was always a Sega kid. And yet in my older age I realize the SNES is definitely a uh, more superior machine really. at least from a hardware perspective and arguably from a game perspective too depends depends on your taste So what I'm doing is hitting it with 460C air and just hoping for the best. You know what, I really should turn off my desolder gun. One second, there we go.
do 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 melt you get melt 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 So these PPUs I'm suspicious of, being that we're seeing graphical distortion, it would make sense that it would be at least one of the PPUs. My suspicion would be PPU 2B. But I don't really know enough about the snares to truly know, so I'm just kind of guessing. I just noticed my mat was bulging up. I'm just making sure it's not moved any components on the underside. And what I'm going to do is get my uh, PCB board holder to make sure that that doesn't happen. Where is it? Very one of the bits of snares. Not really big enough for the job this thing, but it'll do. We just, uh, yeah, we just do that. You know, I was just thinking, uh, maybe the music was safe. Oh, good evening, Andy. Welcome. Yeah, we're all uh, we're all good. I think. I think. I uh, can't can't speak for everyone, but I'm all good. You can see I'm just reflowing a bunch of chips on this uh, Super NES. The hope here is that, um, you know, if any of the chips have kind of got slightly cold solder joints on, maybe this will help sort it out.
Yeah, I think that's just about every chip. Oh, smoky. I've got the fume extractor running, but it's a bit on the uh, slow side there. Let's um, let's do some microscope inspection of joints, shall we? You know, I could do with another capture card, really. In fact, I could do with some kind of better desk organization than what I've got. This is an absolute tip. Come on, I know there's an HDMI port on this somewhere. There we go. Let's take a look. Let's inspect this. We'll inspect it together. Alright, that already looks fine. But looks can be deceiving. So, where are my tweezy wheezies? There they are. We'll do some touch test. Good, good. Good, good, good. Good, 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 good. I'll test this side. Good, 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 good. So this is a sound encoder we're checking. Looks good. I assume this is a memory module right here. Good, 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 not loose, these all seem okay. Yep, check the bottom row. good. And I want to check these to make sure using hot air didn't make anything bridge. It doesn't look like it did. These are the chips I suspect as having an issue, so... Problem is, although I can use my logic probe on these, I don't really know what I'd be looking for, because obviously these chips are working well enough that the system boots, you know, so they're not all going to be in some weird low state. I'd have to know exactly what sort of uh, voltage state we'd expect each pin in at any given moment, which, it, yeah, I don't know. So, probably not an option for me in debugging this. Good, good, good. Oh, good, 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 good. Good, good. Yep, all good. All of those feel okay. Nothing loose there, that's good. I'm just feeling for loose pins. I'm just making sure that all the connections are good. I 
They all look okay. I don't see any obvious bridging or anything either. Oh, the fault on this one, Andy. Um, basically, it scrambles. The graphics will scramble and garble, and the game won't load. The games won't load on it properly. I'll demonstrate it in a second because I've got to try it out again. So you'll see what the problem is in a minute. Now that that doesn't look great. But it's not shorted. Okay, that's probably fine. Hmm. Alright, I think we're okay. Come over the other side, we should have sound chips. Now I did reflow them all. They all feel solidly joined. The other thing is about checking all these pins like this is it does mean that it gives the whole thing enough time to cool down. Okay, I think we're good for another test. Whether it works or not is anyone's best guess, I guess. So let's let's find out. Let's find out. So Bring the uh, HDMI from the microscope again. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased I actually fixed this RGB cable as well. Good lord, this desk area. <laughs> Game is in. Now we just need electricery. Yeah, sound chips are cool. Some of these 16-bit systems had great sound chips as well. No, no, look. Okay, so we've definitely got something dead on here. I think we're getting a turbo sprite now, though. Well, maybe not. Hi, Lewis or Luis. Welcome. Welcome. So, what we've got here is an absolute god awful mess on this. Yeah, this is not. This isn't good, is it? Hmm, okay. 
problem is, whichever chip's dying... I don't know. I guess we could swap out the PPU. We could swap out the PPUs. That is an option. That is always an option, and I do have... Let me see if I can find my Super Nintendo chips. I know I have some. They might be in this area. Time. You know what? I don't know where my uh, snow chips are. Well, that's not to worry. I do have a shattered SNES just down here, so I'm going to grab a shattered SNES. Now, if I recall, the Mega Drive had... Was it a sharp 68,000? Off the top of my head, and I think it also had a Z80 chip as well for backward compatibility with the uh, Master System, if I recall right. Great system, either way. Okay, um, I'm going to grab a shattered SNES, and we're going to pilfer the PPUs. Here's one that I that arrived shattered. Why won't you come out? <laughs> Seriously, come on. Ah, stop it! Yeah, annoyingly, I don't know where the other SNES chips are that I had, so whatever. This screw really wanted to have its head stripped. It really didn't want to come out. But yeah, I bought these on eBay a little while ago, and unfortunately, a couple of them came just smashed to bits. I guess they've got very, very brittle plastics these days, which is a shame. This really doesn't want to come loose. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, hey, uh, what's going on? Oh, hey, Catronics. Is there meant to be a black screen? No, not right now. So, sorry, I'm just catching up with chat. Let's see, I don't know what's been said. Is there meant to be a black screen? Answer no. Hi Angela, hi Catronics. video I posted comments keep being disabled by YouTube I really don't understand why when I for some reason Jason blocked me because of the comments being disabled which is dumb and I spoke to Phil over uh, Catronis is this something I've not been involved with I don't know I don't know, this is not something I've been involved with at all, uh, it sounds a bit like drama, I don't know, I don't know, I wasn't aware of it at all, I can't really comment. I would imagine though, that if that's the case, it wouldn't be that much of an issue. YouTube can be a bit iffy, I don't know, I don't know, I can't comment, because I, I, I don't know, I'm completely unaware of whatever's gone on, you know, I, I don't know. Literally not a clue. <laughs> you know. Sorry, I can't really help. Um, what else is going on? Mostly Motorola 68Ks on the MG, but earlier ones have Signetic 68Ks and a minority Hitachi 68Ks. Oh wow, I didn't realise there was such a spread. This is very much an old snares, yeah. Yeah, what I'm going to do is... Tr shards of plastic. I'm going to transfer these PPUs. And see if that sorts the problem. I do need my chip lifter, actually. I have no clue where that is. Uh, where is my chip lifter? Ah! <laughs> uh, yes, this is what we need. Now... I don't care about the plastic in this. I really don't care about the plastics in this. But then again, I suppose I do care if I get melted plastic all over my desk. Yeah, that's a bad idea, isn't it? Alright, let's get rid of it. Um, crikey. Surrounded by electronics. I've no idea what's going on. Oh no, I bet you're a shattered piece of plastic and you don't want to let go of this screw, do you? Come on. Well, it definitely was a shattered piece of plastic. <laughs> okay. I feel like my work area is shrinking as well. So, 
One thing I'm going to ask people, by the way, right now is... I don't know what's going on, what drama's going on. I don't want to be involved, and I don't want my channel involved in any drama either. I've got no issues at all with anybody who's on here right now, and you're quite welcome to stay, all of you. But again, I'm not interested in getting involved with any kind of drama within the community at all whatsoever. Keep it cordial. And that's all I have to say. Um, any issues with regards to YouTube videos and so on? Probably a good idea to contact YouTube if you can. But if you can't, um, and you can't find anything in the help section, maybe comments are being disabled because of some kind of remarks in the videos. I wouldn't know what to tell you to look for, but you'd have to probably review your content and find something inappropriate that has been said or done, particularly around whatever audience you tend to have. I don't know. And again, as I say, I'm completely unaware of what's going on. But yeah, um, you know, questions are fine. I don't know what's going on, as I say, so... Yeah, you, you, this environment's ridiculous. Like, let's let's zoom out a bit. Let's let's like look. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Anyway, let's get these chips off. So we've got some flux down. These are now donor systems, so what else? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get lots of heat into the board and hopefully it'll just sort of let go of the chip. Yeah, it's not ready yet. Thought it would be. <sighs> Tweezers. That's what I need. Oh, this is a T26. This holder is a T26. Look, look for it on AliExpress. You'll find it. It's a T26. T26 PCB board holder. Alright, this chip is definitely nearly ready to come now. And it's gone! What I'm going to do is I'm going to swap these chips one at a time. seen in years. And yeah, the fault I'm trying to fix is garbled graphics. And garbled graphics are usually a sign of a faulty PPU, which is a primitive version of a GPU. It's short for picture processing unit. These are basically the graphic chips of the uh, Super Nintendo. So I'm just seeing like if swapping these chips will help at all. You never know.
Hopefully, this chip gives up soon. Still not ready. You'd think it would be, wouldn't you? Still not ready. Right, it's ready now. Okay, let me. We're doing microscope work again in a second, so let's get the scope plugged back in and let's um, let's, let's transplant that chip on. Good God. Oh my god, I've got to tidy up this. <clears throat> Jesus. Jesus. some sticky flux as well. Let's get the scope on and hopefully we get a view. We do, excellent. Right, we'll clean off this old solder. Not that it looks particularly bad or anything, but we might as well get rid of it. Although at this point, I'm that buried in junk, <laughs> I, can't, I don't know where my desolder braid is. There it is. Oh my god, I'm so... I'm, so <laughs> I'm, just, I'm looking at this mess going, where did I go wrong in life? <laughs> Okay, let's let's get this cleaned up. Tricky to get everything into shot. There we go, and let's get this cleaned up. go and same again on this side I'm hoping replacing just the one chip will do the job but we'll find out you do have to be gentle when um, replacing old chips like this because the traces can be quite weak on things like this system so what we'll do is we'll we'll hand solder this. So if we can move this into position, which is easier said than done. So about there. And 
Nat Tacky Flux is really holding this chip down, actually. Like, that is like glue. Which is fine, that's, that's great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is drag some of these. No Jesus only pain. Yes, indeed. Indeed. There we go. Nice. Uh, what have we got going on? So let's, let's see. So maybe if you try removing the nozzle so that the heat is covering most of the chip. No, I don't want to cover most of the chip. These aren't really designed for that kind of soldering. They're old chips, remember. They're not like Nintendo Switch chips. You know, this is Greybeard soldering now. So I'm just going to tack each corner. You know, this is this is very much old school soldering right now. This is like, you know, you don't really get that. You do well. You do still get chips in this kind of package, sure, but like it's not as common. You tend to get more QFN and things like that now. Quad flat no lead, by the way, if you were wondering what QFN is. So, what I'm going to do is just come in at the side, get a blob of solder on, and then just doop, 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 doop. Done. That's one line done. Now I'm going to do the same again on this right hand side. Make sure I get that in shot as best I can. Just like that, we're done on that row as well. And then we'll do this bottom row. Who thinks it's PPU1? Or is it PPU2 that's gone bad? What do people think? What do people think? That's the question, isn't it? Okay, so I don't think we've bridged anything and I think we're good. Hard to tell, it needs a clean. I think we're okay there. And now again, same down this side. Yeah, it is a long stream, Jinxie. I'm just sort of messing around, right? Like, I'm trying to get to the bottom of the uh, glitching graphics. You know, I've had it booting up and stuff, and it boots up just fine, but, like, it does die. I think it's down to the PPU. Could also be down to the CPU. So I've swapped out one of the PPU chips, kind of at random, and we're just sort of uh, soldering that in right now, and then I'm going to try another test to see if it worked. So I'm just going down... And down the line trying to I've got a big bridge there. Let's get a bit of flux down there. Let's 
come in with a bit of desolder braid. Alright, that looks better. I think we've relieved the shorts. Let's clean up the mess on the uh, PCB. Yeah, I do have a Barlow lens on at the minute. 0.5, I believe. I think. Bear in mind, I'm seeing a much larger area than the camera's capturing. It's really, yeah. It kind of sucks that people can't really see what I can see on this. Better than factory lol. Absolutely, Jigsy. Absolutely. This really is better than factory. I mean, look. I've got flux everywhere. Why? It's great. Now, to be fair, I'm, I'm kind of making fun, but I actually really like Northridge Fix. I mean, I'm... Different people have different opinions, and I, I kind of make fun sometimes, but, like, I like that channel. I've actually learned a few things by watching the chap as well, watching Alex, you know. I try not to get involved with, uh, with cross-community dramas and things like that, because there's things to be learned from everybody, right? There's no need to be at each other's throats. It's a small community. That's my opinion. I believe that, you know, live and let live. Different business owners have different styles. People have criticisms for different ways of doing things. And, you know, that's fine. I'm, I'm fine with being criticized. Not everybody is, though. And that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, I can be criticized for my uh, uh, techniques and so on, but I'm not a hugely experienced chap, like I can get by, as you can see right now, you know, I can solder just fine, but my diagnostics techniques are probably leave something to be, uh... but yeah, something to be desired. I will now show a better view of this chip, I'll at least try to pan around a bit, so you can see, and the focus is a bit off, isn't it? Yeah, you can see I've soldered all of those, and if we go along the, uh, if we go along that now and check the pens, good, 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 good. See, most of these seem to have made good contact. None of them are loose. At least they don't seem to be. Let me just check you guys can see what I'm doing. Yeah, good, good, good. Good, 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 and good. So they're all fine. And then let's check the right hand side. Good, 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 good. Good, amazing, good, good, suboptimal, good, good, fish, dog, cat, moose, kebab, cheeseburger, southern fried chicken, another kebab, and spaghetti. Okay, that's all fine. Good, good, hopefully good, maybe good, definitely good, 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 
had it. I don't want to be second guessing myself, you see, so I'm just checking that they are all properly soldered, and they seem to be. Alright, I think we're good for a, uh, a quick test then. Another test. So let's find out how this goes. So, better than factory. So far. Better than factory. Exactly, Angela. Exactly. There we go. Okay, I think we're good there. So let's let's see what we get now. To be honest, the only criticism I have of Northridge Fix, which to be fair is not a major criticism in on itself, is around his videos. Now, the, my criticism, which is a fair criticism, I think, is that oftentimes we don't get to see the final repair. He shows some, but not all. We don't get to see the very final result. Did it work? Did it not work? You know, and. Um, I don't know, there's just something a bit extra special when he does show it. So, that's my biggest criticism. Yeah, look at that, it's like like new, except more sticky with flux. Definitely needs a better clean than I've given it. <laughs> but for testing purposes, it should be fine. Let's sling Street Fighter Turbo in again. Let's get that RGB cable, wherever that's hiding, right there. I'm glad I fixed this RGB lead. All right, so we got that, 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 that. Uh, oh yeah, I need to put this in. My biggest problem is I'm basically in a single bedroom flat and I don't have much space for doing this stuff so I've just end up like piling it all up on my desk until I tidy it up. Well, it's powered on but I'm not getting any output. So it wasn't that picture processing unit. We still got the corrupt graphics. Hmm. I wonder if it's a RAM problem. Yeah, not quite there yet. Didn't really make a difference. Definitely hasn't made a difference. That's a shame, isn't it? But that leaves me with PPU that one. Alright. Let's swap that over as well then. Won't take long. Yeah, mother! Jesus! Oh, that voltage regulator is hot. I don't know if you heard my skin sizzle. Yow. Yow. Holy hell. A 7805 shouldn't be getting that hot. Hmm. 
do we have a short? No, we can't. We can't have it. It wouldn't even power up like this. Strange. It's strange. It's very strange. Okay. So I'm going to assume that this PPU is actually good. And that, that is not the source of the problem. So we got that PPU to go. What time are we on? 10 p.m. Wow. You're guessing it would be video RAM. Yeah, it could be. Could be. I'm guessing that's a CIC chip. Are these video RAM? I don't know which are the RAM chips, you know. Well, video RAM chip specifically. I mean, I imagine at this side of the board, but that's a CPU. Is SW RAM system RAM? And then these are both PPU RAM. They are wired to the PPUs. Okay. Could be these then. Yeah, still going, Wayne. Still going. I sizzled myself a bit on the uh, 7805 voltage reg. That thing was hot. It's cooled off now. Damn. Alright, so my thinking then is to pop these two chips off and swap them. They're both the same chip as well. So that should be fine. Let's just do that. <clears throat> Shouldn't take much to get these off. Certainly a lot of work for a SNES, isn't it? Alright, uh, where's the freezers? There they are. Are you ready yet, Mr. Chip? Nope. Nope. Yes. Away with you! That's those off. And we've got a donor system here, so let's... They are different RAM modules, but they should work. It is the same revision motherboard, so let's find out. I'm not looking at chat at the minute, by the way, folks. I will in a moment. Just want to get these chips shorted. Shorted? Sorted. Not shorted. That would be bad.
Yep, there we go. There's a bit of give there. Come on. Yep. <laughs> That's a good chip. Actually, I think it's a good chip. I don't actually know. Mr. Wick. Definitely been a long day. Definitely, Wayne. <laughs> Didn't help I started the day with a hangover. It would also help if my soldering iron wasn't asleep, wouldn't it? Let's try that again. Now I know this is not the ideal way to really clean these up, but you know. When I'm done cleaning these pads I shall check the chat. Looking good, looking good I think. My own ego would like this to be looking good, but I'm not so sure it actually does. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. Yeah, there's a fragment of plastic fell down there as well. Right, whatever. Right, let's see what's going on. So, four hours, you have a lot of patience. You have to have patience. Bye Jaden, see ya, take care. Okay, so I guess we're ready to put these other chips on. Then we'll get these lined up. I get the top lines lined up as well. I think they're not quite right. I'm going to see if I can just eyeball solder these. I think I can. Yep, that looks okay so far. So.
one down, one to go. Really can't wait to get my actual solar fume extractor built. It's gonna be so much better. New video RAM installed, okay. Well, new old video RAM, should I say, but whatever. Wish me luck, folks. Wish me luck. It's totally possible and doable to do it with just a solder and iron, right? I mean, how I've done that before, it's annoying, though. It slows things down, right? to plug this in. Not switched on, which is good. Let's switch over to console. Not the memory. I didn't think it was a memory, to be fair. So I think it's one of the PPUs. And I think it's this PPU. Or maybe it's the cartridge connector along the bottom, but I did reflow that with hot air, so it shouldn't be that. On the off chance, let's use a different cart connector. Let's use this one. Just on the off chance that it may be that there's improper contact. It's unlikely, but you never know, right? So let's find out. Okay, not prop improper contact, that's fine. So I am thinking then that it's the PPU. So, let's get out, let's get it off. I just electrocuted myself on a, uh, on a cap. <laughs> Whoopsie. I don't think it's a CPU, I think it's one of the picture processing units. Yeah, let me turn that off. Oh, hey, dreams. Absolutely bugger indeed with this one. Absolutely.
The problem with a fault like this is obviously it works, it powers on. So it's not like it's as simple as looking for a, a short or something like that. The way you'd actually look for this problem properly is to use a device like uh, like this, which is a logic probe, but like I'm not really sure what I'd be looking for on these particular chips, right? Like, yeah, it's tough. The problem is either going to be this PPU or probably, probably the CPU. Oh, sorry, I didn't have that in shot, did I? There we go. That's fine as it is. Alright, that should do it. Going for it. Going for gold. Do do do. Na -na -na -na. I'm going insane. Send help. I love those chip colours. So handy.
Okay. So we clean that up. It's going to be this chip because it's still the cooking one, whereas this one seems to have cooled off a bit. Yep, so this is a chip I'm transplanting in. Once again, I've got to juggle with HDMI leads because I want to use a microscope for this soldering. When I eventually move and get a bigger place, I'm going to get like a nice proper setup for this streaming because this is just sort of a desk next to me. You should have done the Mega Drive instead. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I look forward to a SNES. It's a good system. Alright, let's get this all lined up. Uh, that there. Move that over there. All right, I think we're looking good. So if I could get the chip in view, there we go. I'm gonna tack it in. <laughs> Whoops. There we go. So I'm gonna get that tacked in anyway. Um, and we'll take it from there. So usually what I like to do with these kind of chips is I'll tack in like each corner and then if I drag solder after that it's not going to shift and move around so you position it first and then solder just like that. Let me see if I can focus this better. I think that's a bit better. You don't need very much solder, to be fair. So that chip shouldn't budge now when I uh, drag solder it. just about get all of it in view near enough kind of sort of maybe take a look at that, we can see that all of those pins are soldered reasonably nicely. You know, I can't claim it's the best soldering ever, but it will do. And that's the key, right? As long as it, as long as it does the job. What is this? What is this? Get. Get. Get out of the way. Go on. Get. Stopping me soldering properly. There we go.
Yeah, that'll be all right. That will be all right, lad. All right. As my family would say. Nice fresh bit of solder. I think that's okay. Doesn't look shorted. Hard to tell. Don't think it is. Hi, Preddy. Welcome to the stream. We're just replacing a. Um PPU chip, well we've re actually replaced about four chips on this snares now. If it's not this PPU, the only chip it really could be is the SW RAM or maybe the CPU. I can't see any other chip it would be that would be the problem. That got it. Whoop. There we go. So then what I do is I get some uh, IPA, I splash it on like this, and now it's better than factory. <laughs> 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 Definitely could use about in the ultrasonic cleaner when this is done. Right, the level of flux on this thing is ungodly. Like at this point, I'm just sort of you know, doing what I can here. I will say, actually, uh, Northridge Fix is uh, slow and it does have staying power. Most people know it. Some people make fun of it, some people don't. But from a business perspective, actually, his little slogan is relatively smart because it resonates. People remember it. I don't think he really means it's better than factory, but it's one of those where uh, people definitely remember it, for good or ill. I guess as a business person, that's precisely what you want. Yeah, let's just put this chip and this heavily fluxed chip. Let's get them over there. Look at the chat. The bot's just recommending stuff at people. Good bot. Good bot. Very good bot.
giving its teeth a good old brush. Oh, we're looking, we're looking all right. Let's just quickly dry it off because YOLO, whatever. Good enough. I'm not trying to melt solder after all. The question is, will this do it? I think it will. I think it will. But you never know, it might not. So all bets are on the table. All bets are on the table. I'm taking guesses now. Will it work? Will it blend? Yeah, I'll definitely blend, but will it work? That is a million pound question. Okay, let's try this again. Let's get some power. And let's see if this Super Nintendo will live. Okay, I guess I've got to select the source. Um, where's my remote? Where is my remote? That was anticlimactic. Um, what? Oh, there it is. I'm a foolish fool, foolish fool, right. No output. I made it worse. That might be the soldering. We might have a short. That's all right. We can fix that though, can't we? So let's get the flux again. Excellent. Right. I'm just going to see if. Reflowing it with hot air now with flux on is enough to sort this out. It should be. Is it a good idea to microwave this? The answer is no. Unless it's an iPhone, in which case, yes. An excellent idea. This is suboptimal, isn't it? What did I do? <laughs> I think I've got to zoom in on this and have a better look at it. 
run the iron down it with some flux or something. That's what I'm thinking. Ah, there we go. So we've got some image now. So... My guess would be at least some of these legs are bridged. So if I just get a ton of flux down the side and run the iron along it... Like a so. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Now nah, that's definitely finished. <laughs> think any of those are fridge now. So I've got to do the top line. I mean, it could well be that this donor PPU is actually knackered. I don't know. I guess anything could happen in the next few minutes. So I'm pretty sure that there are no bridges on that now. So, let's try again. And tomorrow I am going to completely obliterate this area I work in and get it supremely tidy again. Also, whoever suggested I work on a SNES, um, thanks. <laughs> oh dear. Right, anyway. Ciao, Andy. Or Brian, or whoever was leaving. Night, Brian. Sorry. I, I was just not properly checking the chat there. Let's see. Um, ribbon cable. Anything? 
That certainly looks like a, not an improvement. Interesting it's getting a signal though. I think the donor chips are, I think the donor chips dead. I think that's no good. Um, that may have introduced a completely different problem then. I think though, because of the time of night, I'm going to have to really call this quits because I do have work in the morning and I have to clean up this absolute trash heap that I've created. Like, honestly, this is, uh, I can't live like this. <laughs> I just can't. Uh, yeah, so. I'm going to call it quits anyway. I am going to do another stream of this. My next stream will be trying to fix this. But I'll have a much tidier and better prepared work area for it, me imagines. Because this is just... Um, yeah, it's, um, it's something. It's some kind of something. But yeah, anyway, folks. I'm going to wish you all a good night. It's been absolutely fantastic having you all along for the ride. And, um, yeah, as I say, I'll be replacing that and possibly the CPU. I think this is dead, this donor chip. And I, I, I need to find my uh, my other uh, SNES donor chips, because I've got a bag with them already pre-desoldered, so I'll be using those. But, yeah, anyway, have a fantastic night or day or morning or whatever time it is, folks. And um, good having you along. And uh, as always, bye for now. Take care.